Hey guys, this video is about your spa skill 1 and 2. In this video, you will learn everything you need to know for you to be able to ace your spa test. Alright, the very first thing that you need to know is that there is a certain structure in a spa test. Uh, there are a few things you need to write down and if you do not have or if you are missing any of these components, then you will lose marks here and there. So, the very first thing you need to know about spa is that uh, essentially you are conducting an experiment. So, why is it important that uh, we as scientists, yes you guys are scientists as well, for us to conduct experiment? It's because we want to explore a certain relationship. Um, as scientists, you, dis you think that there might be a certain relationship. Let's say you suspect that changing a certain variable here will affect the variable over here. So the thing that you change is called the independent variable. I'll call this IV from now. And the thing that you measure or you suspect that will change because of this fella is called the DV or the dependent variable. All right. Of course, you're a scientist. So uh, after you explore the certain relationship, you record your data, you would need to be able to draw a graph. Because drawing a graph helps you to visualize the relationship between these two IV and DV that you've already conducted the experiment for. Uh, of course, after you've drawn a graph, usually then you will need to determine a gradient. After determining the gradient, you will need to comment on the relationship between the two because that's the whole purpose of the experiment, right? So, uh, there is a standard kind of answer for this. So, I'll just write this. I'll just reveal this to you. So, IV and DV or the independent variable and the dependent variable has a linear or non-linear relationship. So, if it's a straight, if you do draw a graph later on and you discover that it's a straight line graph, then, of course, you should have this in your conclusion statement uh, this is your conclusion statement by the way um, if you draw a graph and you get a curve then it is a non-linear relationship then it should be there so if you draw a graph and you discover that hey uh, my graph goes like that then this is a graph with a positive gradient so make sure to include this or uh, if your graph turns out like this this is a negative gradient so then it must have this so after you commented on the relationship finally you will need to Quote some sources of error and also things that you can con you can improve on in the setup, All right? So uh, this next part is what we're gonna uh, what you're gonna learn for how to fill up a table or your of your data properly. So in our school we use H and PRA. Uh, so what does H stand for first and foremost? H stands for heading with units. Um, in all experiment, please ensure when you record your data you have the title you have the variable here sorry x slash followed by the units so all things that you record down in your data table must have this headings with units all right the next thing you need to have to take note sorry in the recording of data is the number of readings um to draw a proper straight line graph you will need five good readings so just to be safe you are encouraged to go and take six so please take note please take six readings for all your spa experiments um, the next thing has to do with P your precision um, the precision of your reading has is basically just how much how many DP should I record down my reading to right this is a little bit more difficult so I'll spend some time going through with this all right so let's say you want to measure the dimensions of this wooden block right and you have with you a meter ruler and when you quote when you measure it up and then you have to know how many dp should i you record the dimensions of this wooden block to so if let's say i were to use like this what should the reading be how many dp should i record it down to All right how you determine how many dp your recording should be to is dependent on how many areas are associated with the recording or the measurement of this wooden block so if you look at this carefully there is a problem here because you cannot fully 100% be sure that you place the start of the block at the 0 cm mark so when you are unsure when you can't determine when you are unable to determine the exact position where you can place this block then that means there is an associated error with this so here there's an error two there's also an error when you try to read your readings here. So there's two sources of error. One in the placement, two in the recording when you decide to have a look at your data here. 
Alright, so when there's two sources of error involved in the measurement, you can only read to the smallest marking. So in this case, the smallest marking for the meter ruler is 2.1 cm. If we look at the smallest marking, it's only 0 0.1 cm. So your number of the decimal places should be accurate to 0.1 cm. So what equipment doesn't have this sort of error? If you look at your voltmeter, which you have not learned, or you will only discover, uh, you only learn about it in set four next year. Is this um, this voltmeter does not have the associated first error because the marking the ruler you assume that it is always at zero and it is accurate at zero. So the only error then comes about when you try to read your reading, and you try to read your your reading. There is an error here some human error so there's only one source of error and there's only one source of error you can read up to accurate to half the smallest marking so in this case if you were to look at your voltmeter here the smallest marking is 0 0.1 volts but half the smallest marking will be 0 0.05 volts so you must be able to, you, your data that if you eventually record down in the table must be to 2 dp accurate to 0 0.05 volts. Of course, if you can't remember all this, the easiest thing for you to remember is page 26 of your practical workbook. Page 26 of your practical workbook tells you exactly what instrument and what is the uncertainty of the instrument. That means how many dp should I be able to record it down to. So just now when we use a meter ruler, the uncertainty it states here is record down to the smallest division and therefore just 2.1 cm. If you look at the voltmeter, it's a 0 to 5 volt voltmeter. I can read to half the smallest marking and I can read accurate up to 0 0.05 volts. So if you look at the voltmeter here, 0 to 5 volts, I can read accurate up to half the smallest division, 0 0.05 volts. So of course, if you're lazy, you can't remember, you can't think, just memorize this page. Alright, so back to the table. After precision comes your R. Your R is your range. Alright, so this range uh, in your SPA experiment, uh, the test paper won't be so easy. They won't give you the table with these nice readings. So you need to find out exactly what is a good range for you to use. Your good range is dependent on the instrument you are given. So let's say I have a wire and the wire is strung across the ruler. The ruler is a 1 meter ruler from 0 to 1 meter. Um, of course it makes good science or good judgment for you to be able to uh, use as much of the ruler as possible. It makes no physical sense for you to want to Make sure that your IV or your independent variable readings are 1 cm, 2 cm, 3 cm, 4 cm, 5 cm, 6 cm. Then you only use a small portion of the ruler. So you should spread out your readings. Your first reading should be here, second reading here, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, for example. So a good range for you to use for if your independent variable instrument is a meter ruler will be to use perhaps 15 cm, then 30, then 45 then 60, 75, followed by 90. So then that enables you to use a majority of the ruler here. So that is a good range. Finally, it has to do with your accuracy. For accuracy, or your A stands for accuracy, your accuracy simply means that whatever you reading you record down for your de dependent variable here, it must be within plus minus 10% of the readings that your teacher or the examiner conducts. So if you're if let's say the teacher's reading or the examiner's reading is 9.2 volts, then yes, you are within this range and you get the accuracy mark. And all your readings here must be to plus minus 10% of the examiner's marks. So that's all you need to know. H N P R A on how to record it, your data in a table. The next part of the video will be how you would want to draw your graph. So that's all.